Uh, for about two years, uh, our family was hunted. Uh, we had a bomb planted in our car. We had drive-by shootings. Uh, animals would be killed and laid at, uh, the, from our animals would be killed and laid on the porch. Uh, people would break into the house, would call from other parts of the house. It was a big foster home, so they could do that. Uh, just a lot of stuff was going on. And uh, I said, God, I need a strategy uh, of how to deal with this. I was a deputy sheriff at the time. And, and I've been praying, God, you need to either stop it or you need to take them out and you need to remove this. And uh, a, a, we went to a church service and uh, a, an evangelist had come through and he had us as a family stand up. He said, I want you to know God is going to protect you. But I was still praying for a strategy to know who, how to identify what was going on to see how we could stop it. And so God began to show me and reveal things, began to put things together. And one day, um, I ended up working uh, as an extra shift uh, over at the county jail, and I was supposed to be watching this individual, this one poor individual. His body was all blown up. He was begging for water. We couldn't give him water. We'd kill him. Uh, it, just, it was just a horrendous situation. I was working on the strategy. I had uh, lots of computer... Uh, papers I was going through. I was trying to track and figure out the information. And as I was doing it, this guy's name popped up. And I began to realize God was protecting me even though I did not see what was going on. And this guy was known for murder and a lot of things going on. And God was watching out for us. It affected me because that's not how I wanted my person to be answered. And so it really told me I need to have a strategy when you pray. Because it can be harmful or not if you don't, don't have a strategy. So we as a church in looking at this time that we're living in need a strategy. And that strategy is simply that has been laid out to us and, and through a dream uh, I shared with you uh, a few weeks ago, and that's why we're in Joshua, that this verse came to me from Joshua 3, uh, 11. Joshua told Jerry, Come and listen to what the Lord your God says. Today you will know that the living God is among you. He will surely drive out your enemies ahead of you. Look, the Ark of the Covenant, which belongs to the Lord of the whole earth, will lead you across the Jordan River. And God laid out this strategic vision. It simply is to have God's heart for those that are hurting, those that are lost, to be prepared to take broken to wholeness. And that means being involved with people for a while. To get equipped for spiritual warfare, all the while we are contending in prayer for revival. And we are praying and we are interceding, okay? And it's really important that you guys attend our deeper nights, the second ones there of every uh, month. They're a powerful night. It's a great time of equipping and great things occur. We had a lot of prophetic messages that really occurred this last time. Uh, so I just encourage you to be a part. If you have your notes, go ahead and reach down, pull out your notes. You go online to Found Grace, get the notes. We're in this series in Joshua. What is a warrior? Now, if we're kind of gathering up a description, we'd say someone strong, someone that was unbeatable, someone that was flawless, someone that, that just knew what to do. But when you read the Bible and you look at the Bible, you find out God's warriors are found in weird, unusual places. Last week, we found it in a house of a prostitute. We found it in a teen that had been taken from her country that was abandoned and her parents had died. We found it in an individual that seemed neglected and had nothing to offer. God finds warriors here. God finds people they can use because what you think you need, what you need to have in your life is not usually what God is looking for. God's looking for someone that will trust him. In spite of the fear, the weakness, whatever's going on, they will trust him. And the Bible shows us we all have it what it takes to be a warrior. Turn to somebody and say, you have what it takes. Let everybody know. You have what, see, a lot of people don't believe that. You have what it takes. We have to look them in the eye, all right? In Joshua, people are entering this new time. There have been a routine. They've been normal to them. It's a whole new time. Nothing is going to be normal. They are uncertain. They are afraid of what their future is. And God is developing them 
to be a warrior. This is a whole thing. They had been slaves. They had been wanderers. Now, God says, I need you to be warriors. And they'd never done battle. They've never been trained. And God says, I'm going to prepare them to be this. We looked at that a warrior needs courage. A warrior needs preparation. And today, a warrior needs to persevere, to hang in there, to stick to it. All right? Especially in a time like today, you need to persevere. You need to stick with it, with confusion, with anger, and just any statement. You're not sure whether something's going to make someone upset. Uh, pastor that's being arrested up in Canada just because he's getting ready to have a service. Israel locked in war. When we look at end times and how Israel is going to be the central place, uh, that is an incredible thing to be thinking about and looking at. We need to persevere in prayer, in inviting others, and engaging as a church. We need to stick to it, not shrink back, but move forward to stand. Parents, you need to persevere. Uh, that little device called the phone that's in the hand of your kids is shaping and molding in them and in a direction. And, and you have to learn to be tech wise as well as to how to discern and be able to give them information to train them and to teach them. Uh, if you're married, this has been a difficult time. You've been locked in together. You're with each other 24 seven. A lot of things that, you know, just tension. A lot of the things are kind of being because it's everything, nothing's normal. You, know, you can't count on someone being gone or not. Like, just like, leave me alone for a week, you know? Let's go to work, you know? Uh, but for some of you, uh, you know, it's going to be a, a different thing because in about nine months, we should have a lot of babies popping up. Uh, you know, the coronials are what they think they're going to call that, that group, though, okay? Uh, maybe you're single, and there's just a lot of loneliness there, and uh, you're just wondering, how is God going to work in my life? Economics is uncertainty and all that's happening. This is a challenging time. In uncertainty, you need to persevere. You need to persevere. You need to hang in there. So I want to share three lessons on developing perseverance. Here's our memory verse. Read along with me in Hebrews 10, 36. You, you need to persevere. You know, I just thought I'd point that out. You. Okay, take that finger and go, you. All right? You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. On the other side of perseverance is the promise. God has a promise. God has a hope on the other side. The book of Joshua that we're reading is this uh, book on perseverance, how to hang in there, how to deal with everything that's going on, how to be courageous. We talked about it, how to prepare through faithfulness. And today, as warriors, we need to persevere to break through walls. We're all surrounded by walls that we need to break through. We have lids on what we think that we're capable of doing, what God can do through us. We have things that are in, involved in keeping us from how God pictures us and God intends us. So Joshua chapter 6, verses 1 through 2. Now the gates of Jericho were securely barred because of the Israelites. No one went out and no one came in. Uh, the picture they're going to throw up there is kind of the, what the picture of Jericho looked like. There was a ditch that was around the entire city. So you had to cross that ditch. Then there was the very first wall. That wall was about 15 feet high, all right? And so uh, then the next wall was about 25, a total of 40 feet. That's a massive area. And just because... You, you, so you get to understand some of the topographical things that are going on. There were, were hills and mountains and up to a plateau area that was on the right. It kept them from being able to go to the right side. On the left side, there was the water, the sea. And so they couldn't go that way. And the city was dead center into place. It was the only entrance into the land that God has promised them. And they have to go by. And this is an army prepared to do war. And they're, not gonna, they're lo looking at this million people two million people that are wandering a desert that have already defeated somebody else saying, you know what? We're not letting you come through here. And what they see is a wall. Guarded. 
blocked. Then the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have delivered Jericho into your hands. God, I'm not sure where you're looking. I see 40 foot of wall, armies. I see a wall. I surely don't see anything delivered here. I see a problem. I see a difficult. I see something that may take my life. What the heck are you looking at? But God says, I have delivered. Usually, what you see is a wall that's in front of you isn't what God is sharing with you that he wants you to do. You, you ever been in a place where what you see is like, there is just no way, but God's saying, here's what I want you to do, and it seems to be opposite? If you walk with God very long, you're going to find out that's the way it usually works out. This is impossible. This can't happen. There is this wall. But God says, I have delivered. That's past tense. What little I know about English. Past means over, done, completed. He's using a past tense about something I'm seeing now. There's no done here. And there's confusion because of this. Inside your notes, God is speaking to you and telling perseverance is developed when we trust. When you trust God, perseverance is developed. The very first thing I, I want to share with you. Where we see walls, God sees a way through. Where I see the problems, the difficulty, the rejections, the isolation, uh, I wasn't raised right, I don't have the finances, I, wherever I see, what I see is the problems or the difficulties. God says, I see a way through. I have a plan. I have an answer. Whatever walls we see, and fear, and medical bills, and finances, and relationships, whatever you see, God sees a way through. He sees you on the other side. Okay, God, if that's the case, then just give me the answer. Show me the plan. Lay it all out for me so I can know that this is what you're going to do. I mean, why does God have to wait so long to tell us everything? Uh, that's, you ever ask that question? God, why are you waiting? Why is it taking so long? I've got this wall. If you've got a plan, then tell me. Well, the answer is, God's more interested in your character, who you are as a person, and he is the answer. God, I just want you to fix this. Yeah, I want to fix this. I want to fix your heart. I want to fix who you are. But this will fix it. No, it won't. <laughs> we need to fix this. God is concerned more about who you are. What you're feeling. What you're thinking. And then some answer, some miracle that he performs. He wants to develop you. The issue in North America, because the only country that thinks this way, because things can be comfortable. Things can be easy. I mean, it's, if, if AC went out at church, boy, that would be a bad day. <sighs> Just hope it's not a hot outside, you know? I mean, seriously. There are people, I was talking to a pastor that says, if, if the people thought, you know, if the temperature just gets off a little bit, they're saying, we're out of here today. But having to struggle? No, we got options. There's always another thing we can do. There's always, you know, see, on Sundays we need to decide because we got options. Reading the Bible, they got to decide because I got options. Is it the best option for me right now? Because I've got options. Independence. I can just do it my own way. Not interdependence. Being interdependent and kind of caring for other people and locked down to responsibility, and kind of, that's kind of that you can't do all the things that you would hope to do by yourself. We keep saying I'm independent. Quite frankly, there's God's way, and then there's always another way. And if I like one of the other ways, God will forgive me, and it'll all kind of work out eventually because it doesn't really matter if I do God's way. So we think. 
That's the American church. God wants us to trust him. And he will develop your character. He promises that. It's weird, though, that it takes an emergency. It takes a crisis. It takes something to so hit us. It takes something to stop us like a wall. And then we turn to God. Now, I don't want you to feel shame. I don't want you to feel bad. Because God says, whatever makes you turn to me, that's great. Hitting your face against a wall, if that's the way you want to choose to do it, then that works for me. I'd rather you just do it, turn to me, so we could do it another way, but whatever makes you turn to me, that's great. But throughout history, it's always a crisis. It seems like when things are really going good, and we really have a lot, and we have prosperity, and things are really going our way, that's when we least trust in God. It's just our human nature. Something that's kind of damaged about us, and yet God still loves us. He says, turn to me. It's in that moment we find God, and then he turns your lack of faith to faith. And you may turn to a growth group. You uh, may turn to something and say, God, I've got to experience you. You lean into God. I, I need an answer. I need you to move in my life. I need you to do something now. Now, God lays out his plan to Joshua. Joshua chapter 6, verses 3 to 6. You may want to write that down. He marched around the city once with all the armed men. He said, do this for six days. Have seven priests carry trumpets of ram horns in front of the ark. When you get to the seventh day, march around for the city seven times with the priests blowing the trumpets. When you hear the sound of a long blast of the trumpets, have the whole army give a loud shout. Then the walls of the city will collapse and the army will go up everyone straight in. God says, I want you to take your warrior. I want you to take those who are going to fight. And I want you to walk around the city. Let's go for a walk. That's the game plan. On day seven, you're to shout. That's the strategy. And even more confusing than that, Joshua, the one that's told this, the people don't even know how this whole plan's going to work out. He's not, he never shares it with them. Joshua knows. Joshua's heard. Joshua has to believe. Joshua has to keep them in line now as they do this. So I don't think you get things out of a, out of a Bible story until you put yourself in it. So imagine that you're in this uncertain time. You're camping out. Uh, you're looking for a home. Uh, you, you're, you're told now we're going to go to war. You're amped up. You're excited. You're trying to prepare yourself. There's all this uncertainty. And day one, you go out and you walk around this city. Just to see how big it is. And you go home. The wife goes, how'd it go today? Ah, it just went, you know. We walked around the city, you know, and I guess he's stretching us out, you know. Don't you, you, know, you pull a hamstring while you're out there. That's, that's a terrible thing to do, you know, especially in war. So day two, they go for a walk. You come back home. They ask you again, how'd it go out there today? Uh, well, we walked around the city, uh, you know. It's a long walk. I mean, it's a big city. This had to start to work on them a little bit. These walls and that ditch and all the things. I mean, I took some time to really see how much it was. Uh, maybe Joshua's trying to get us to march in step because, you know, we need to look like an army first before we, you know, start attacking, you know. Day three, again, you march around the city. Four, five. But day six, you're just saying, I don't know what Joshua's going to do. I have no clue what's happening. Every morning we get up, we march around this city. It just looks like trouble. It looks like a challenge. I'm not sure how this is going to work. Can you imagine the frustration? Can you imagine some of the talk? That's what got them in trouble before. Because every time they got to a place to trust God, 
They wouldn't trust God. They would turn on the leaders. They'd be upset. They'd quit. But perseverance, trust in God, that wasn't in the cards. So, God says, when you see a wall, I have a way through. Point two. Just because you don't see progress doesn't mean God's not moving. Just because you don't see changes, nothing seems to look different. Six days of walking, nothing's really changed, doesn't mean God's not moving. Now, I could kind of go with this one. I could kind of, this would kind of make sense, you know, if God would just show a little progress every day. One day, day one, we just kind of walked around, just kind of get our feet and our bearing. Okay, day two, there's an earthquake. <laughs> oh, baby. Yeah, I knew God was showing up. Yeah, you guys felt that tremor, didn't you? <laughs> that should have rocked your boat a little bit. Day three, you know, and then a little shaking, and there's some dust coming up. Oh, baby, you better look out now, you know. Day four, there's a crack at the top. Some rubble falls off. Oh, man, I didn't think I was going to do that. That's, that's crazy. Isn't it? Day five, you're just kind of, what is God going to do today? No, nothing. Nothing at all. They're probably up, the enemy's up there kind of just yelling names down. What's wrong with you? Don't you know how, you know, is this the best you can do? I need progress. I need to know I'm winning. I need to know what's happening, all right? Not seeing God move. When I've been praying and I'm interceding, I'm like, when I'm not seeing God move, that's hard. Over 50 years ago, a young boy about age five came to live with us in our home. And all the way up through his teenage years, there was nothing but anger, hurt, resentment, trying to love, trying to work, trying to reach this kid. High school, big blow up. He leaves, takes off, joins the military, and is gone for about five or six years. Afterwards, he comes back and kind of makes contact, strained relationship. My mom's died by then, things that just, you know, you know, you broke her heart, you really hurt her. Just, just a lot of, lot of undeserved guilt and stuff going on. It took some while to kind of get things going again for us as a, in a relationship. A good 20, 25 years pass, and there's nothing but problems and difficulties. Then, when we went to move into this building, this young man, my brother, who we've been in a relationship and really been growing tight together again, he steps up to help us face our wall. Fifty years. Decades. There was no idea that something like this was going to happen. We were glad that there was just changes in his life. God was preparing the way through. And that's the way God is in each of our lives. God already has a plan, and God is already preparing the way through. Even though we don't see it, it's the opposite. I don't know why I'm saying this, but in the midst of that, Bill comes in to me one day. I'm just going to point this out. But you said, well, you weren't sure we we're going to hang around because of things going on. I said, you know what? I'm going to leave with you. If, if things don't turn around in the year, year so, I'm leaving with you. If you just stick in and hang in with me. God begins to create change. Amazing. We only see walls 
God sees the way through. So much in life requires perseverance, stick to itness, hanging in there. Will you continue when you don't see what you're hoping to see? God wants you to trust Him, not the work. I'm not forgetting that. So often we want the miracle. Lord, I'm praying. I don't see the miracle. I can't trust you. I said, I want you to trust me no matter what I do. Not my work, not my blessing, not my whatever happens. You know, don't turn it into some lid for you that keeps you from, from trusting me, some deception. Don't turn it into something else. Will you trust me no matter what? Often we just stop praying. I don't see you doing anything here, God. We stop pressing in. I just, you know, I'm not sensing anything. You stop inviting. I've invited him so many times. Why invite him again? You stop giving. It doesn't matter. You know, what? what's, what's the big deal? You stop believing. You stop trusting God. And God says, keep persevering. Don't quit on the back. God sees a way through when you don't. And there's no progress. God is at work. And number three, your progress tomorrow will depend on your ability to persevere today. Whether you receive the promise, whether you receive the miracle, depends on whether you're persevering, you're sticking to it, you're hanging in there. James 1.4, write that down or look it up later. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking in anything. What if you stopped on day six? What if in all of March you said, forget all this, you know? It's been six days. I've been doing it long enough. It's been a year. It's been 10 years. It's been long enough. What if you just quit then? you would have missed where God began and was promising to finish. So often we just quit on God. And God is trying to take us through that wall. So I want to reread that same verse, James 1, 4, in the message. You know, under pressure, your faith life is forced in the open. And it's, it's true colors. So don't try to get out of anything prematurely. Let it do its work. So you become mature and well-developed, not deficient, not lacking in any way. Hang in there because I'm developing your character. Perseverance will determine your progress in life. There are skills that you need to go to the next level. What if you had stopped marching? Maybe you have stopped marching. God says, I want you to continue marching. Where you stop, start again. What happens when we stop in day six? And this all that God has promised to bring to completion. I believe God is doing something in your life as you persevere. There's a man that God is just showing you. Yes, you provided, and yes, you're a worker, but it's about your kids. It's time to turn your heart toward your family. It's time for you to lead them spiritually and develop them. There's a woman he's reviewing that your real beauty isn't in the outer, but it's projected from the inside in your love and your character. And your words and the things you declare over people and speak over it just makes you so attractive. There are people that are hurting in great pain. And God says, I want to break the chains. I want to set you free from that hurt and that pain. You run, you try to avoid that. I want to break those chains and walk you out of that pain. There are those that are abandoned and rejected Think that you're never going to be loved, and God says you will always be loved. I'm going to love you personally.
There are students who are basing their identity on what people think or what's said about them. And God says, you need to know what I say about you. There's many adults that can learn from that one. You need to hear what I say about you. And let that be your picture. As a businessman in, in this uncertain times, you're not knowing what to God. And God says, you need to read it raise the spiritual temperature in those that you influence, that those that you're around. You need to allow God to work through me to change their life in dividends that will last for eternity. It's time for us to wake up, to step up, to stand, to persevere. And that requires perseverance. That requires that character. Fear is just yelling in you. There is no way. Can't you see the wall? Can't you see the, the injustice? Can't you see the betrayal? There's no way. How can this be possible? Don't you see the wall? The Holy Spirit is stepping up and saying, Peace. Be still. Can't you see my love? Can't you see my hope? Can't you see my deliverance? You weren't meant to be this way. You were meant to be different. Paul, who faced great uncertainty, had great results, and declares in 2 Timothy, I have no regrets. I couldn't be more sure of my ground. The one I've trusted in can take care of what he's trusted me to do right to the end. When I was growing up, there was a period that we had, had this like doughboy pool, and and uh, so I was trying to learn how to breathe underwater. You know, no, not breathe underwater. I was holding my breath underwater, and so uh, you know, I could get to a minute. Some of you up there counting down the clock, you get to a minute, maybe a minute and 10 seconds. And it's like, I just, at that point, you kind of panic. You're trying to say, you know, I can't do it. You know, you come up out of the water. And uh, someone, this, this older adult says, let me just kind of help you and, and show you some things. I think that's important for you today right now. When you think you can't persevere, you can't go on any longer. Here's some steps. Relaxing God. He said, you need to relax. I mean, you're getting all tensed up. Getting, I don't know if I can do it. I'm going to, you know, you know well, I'm going to drown. What's going to happen? I don't think I can do it. When you're tensed up like that, you, you, you push the oxygen out. You, you, can't, you can't do what you need. You need to relax. And God, you need to relax. All the things that you're looking at and declaring are, are greater or stops or in the way. It can't be overcome. You can't hear even God's voice because you're not relaxed. Then you need to breathe slowly. That just kind of slows down your heart rate. You stop burning oxygen on a higher level. You have to relax. Until you relax with God, you're not hearing clearly. Last night I was, I was telling the ki kids we're doing a treasure hunt. You got five minutes, you got four minutes, you got two minutes. They're getting panicked. They, they, they wouldn't even work. They were standing in one place bumping each other. Oh no, oh no, oh no. That's the way we look. You relax, breathe slowly, meditate on God. Exhale all that's inside your lungs. And then breathe real deep. We, we have to let go. There's so much junk, there's so much stress, there's so much fear, there's so much worry, there's so much things that, that's got us back. We need to just let go, God. I, And breathe deep. All that God has. Deep. Deep. You can max yourself out of God. In the worship. In His presence. In His Word. Suck in as much as you can. So that when you go underwater, you're relaxed and you're at peace. And you relax. You don't thrash. You know, but you just kind of float. You just relax. Be still. 
No, I'm God. Be still. Do you let it go? You can't be still till you let it go. No, I'm God. God, you got this. I don't know how, but you got this. And then when you feel like you've reached the end, you can't hold your breath any longer, you let out just a little bit. Just a few bits. Not everything. <laughs> just a little. And you hold on longer. when you come up, you'll find that you've gone farther and done more. You have more character than you ever imagined before. God's about building character as fast as you can let him build character. It's not about keeping you underwater as long as it takes. He said, can you just trust me? No, no, I need this. No, no. No, you don't need this. Just trust me. I have so much better. God is speaking to somebody so strongly, so heavily right now. And you need to know this word and this example is just for you. Philippians 4.13 For I can do everything through Christ. He gives me strength. Ephesians 3.20 God who is able through his mighty work work within me works to accomplish infinitely more than we ask or even think. Whatever I could think of Trust in you. The simple takeaway is this. God wants to do something, but it requires your perseverance. It requires your faith. If you're waiting on somebody else, if you're waiting on something else, if you're you're delaying because someone else, you're you're doing the wrong thing. You need to trust God. As the worship team comes, I just want you to just close your eyes for a second and I want you to think, where has God put his finger on you and he's saying, I need you to trust me. I need you to trust me here. And you're anxious and you're ready to just go, yeah, give me the top, give me the top. And God says, I want you to trust me. And we're going to pray a prayer and we call it base. It's getting on base with God. It's correcting things with God. And whether you've ever had a relationship with Christ or whether you don't have a relationship with Christ, this is a great start. Because it's starting with God. You are the Son of God. Where does God need to be put first and saying, God, you've got this. You do have a way through this. I'm trusting you. Where do you admit that you've been doubting, you've been fearful, you've not knowing what to do, you've been overwhelmed, you've just been rebellious, you've been doing it your way. You just, God, forgive me. I accept your way. I accept your forgiveness. And then you surrender and say, God, I'm putting you first. You tell me what to do, I'll do it. Show me where I lack. Show me where you're trying to build. See, God only works with those that are willing those that are responsive. They're trusting you. But you have to express it. You have to pray. You have to ask God. You have to say, God, you need to do this. In your words, out loud, in your heart and mind, you have to express it. So maybe it's accepting Christ for the first time. For many of you, I believe it's God, him telling you, this is the wall that you're facing. I need you to trust me. So, Lord, I believe you're the Son of God. That means you have a way through. That means you're in charge. There is nothing. I don't have to worry about the how. You're going to do it. You are God. Your blood is enough. And, Lord, I admit I've doubted. I've not trusted you. I've not looked to you. I've not allowed you. I'm not even, I've just I've even ignored you in a lot of places. Forgive me. Forgive me.
give me, wash over me. I accept your forgiveness. Many of you need to accept it because you can't earn it. You can't do anything about it. Yes, you're unworthy. You just need to accept it. If I may do it again, you need to accept his forgiveness. Let it wash over you and change you. And I, Lord, I surrender. I've been doing it my way. I've been doing it my thinking. I've been saying what I want to do, what I don't want to do, what I'll give to you, what I won't give to you. I give it all. You're now in charge. In this crisis, in this situation of things that I'm wrestling with, in this place where I need you to be God, I'm surrendering it all. And Lord, I want you to hear me. I want you to be involved. I want you to interact. I release you. You've got to tell him. I release you to be God in my life. God will do that in this moment. 